I don't think uh, Peter necessarily represents one thing, which is his strength. He is perfectly equipped, I would say, to getting the best out of a major orchestra. He's had this really extraordinary career, uh, both as an orchestra leader and, and before that in the Britain Quartet. But he is, of course, uh, extremely adventurous um, and has talents in so many different fields. He's hung up on music, like I am. If you're not hung up on it and you do it, you won't do any good. <laughs> and it's interesting to see how he himself fits into the musical world because he is a bit of a maverick and he is a bit of an individual. Music creates fabulous atmospheres. Um, we can be there even though we're not. There's so much in music which cannot be verbalised. You know, Beethoven himself said, you know, music starts where words stop. I've been very aware of the importance of the training that I had. Early days were, of course, uh, Mancunian. And when I was growing up, of course, the great name was Sir John Barby Rolly. The Barbarolli tradition was tremendous because it was all about string playing. Barbarolli was a cellist. And um, so I felt a real affinity there. You know, I was very fortunate because at a very early age, my then teacher, and my first teacher, was the leader of John Barbarolli's orchestra. His name was Lawrence Turner. I mean, I was looking at Bartok quartets when I was eight. You know, I was invited by George Schulte, you know, to become co leader of the London Philharmonic Orchestra. And so, you know, I was brought up by a whole group of fantastic conductors. You know, after a period uh, at the LPO, it was clear that I had to go back to chamber music. Eventually, this was it. I wanted to play string quartets. The Britain Quartet was the first British quartet, actually, uh, to be on the EMI label. So 10 years in the Britain Quartet took me around the world, everywhere, as a, a kind of British export. And I think the work that I've done in all the different disciplines that I've been involved in has led me now to this point. It made me face a real question, which is, how do composers work? Why do they write the works that they do? The thing about Peter, perhaps compared with other conductors, is that he knows what it's like to play in an orchestra from, from the inside. He just sort of understands what the players need, I think, from having done it himself. Um, because he comes from a background which is not only leading the major orchestras, playing as a soloist, playing in a leading string quartet, he has an amalgam of talents which are perfectly honed, if you like, to be a very fine conductor as well. Well, uh, five years ago I set up a, a, my own orchestra uh, because I felt that you know, I wanted to work with a lot of people, a lot of cross arts, uh, and inter-art uh, inter uh, relationships, I wanted to build them up. So I thought, well, why not let's have an arts think tank, but with, with an orchestra at its center, but let's bring in all the disciplines. I think it's a growing audience for so many different live art forms. So it's about live events. People like going to live events now. So we've done some pretty remarkable projects, you know. I put on the first opera at Shakespeare's Globe. You know, I've given the first concert in, uh, underneath the pyramid of the Louvre in Paris. You know, we went out to Rome to play the first concert in the chapel of St. John Hospitaller. I mean, it's the first orchestral concert ever given in that space. The orchestra has played in very many site-specific spaces and I'm trying to create, you know, an energy in all the different spaces that we play. My specific point is because it is about the live experience. It's about the people, it's about audiences. And a friend of mine, Thomas William Smith, and I had great talks about, you know, the excitement about this. So we came together thinking, well, let's get a, a concept of sound that would work out a masterpiece, which is gonna be at the Royal Hospital in Chelsea. It's a huge building, it's one of the biggest uh, temporary structures that has been built in this city. And I decided what I'd try to do is create a soundscape. All groups will have screens in front of them. The groups will be placed geographically, north, south, east and west, in this massive, massive building. The fair is predicated on the concepts of innovation and pioneering spirit. And this is a first. The Manning Camerata performance is a genuine first. Nothing like it has ever been tried before. I think it will be a really innovative and exciting performance for the public to participate in, really, because that's the point. You're, you're living, walking, breathing, promenading around the orchestras. 
But for me, the best outcome is building audiences, making sure that audiences are enthused by music. You know, I'm here to help develop future possibilities, collaborative possibilities, because the shape of the symphony orchestra is going to change. The audience is going to change. The power of music seems to be increasing. It's not decreasing. The, the classical arts are, they're back again, you know. They're, they're back and they're providing the most remarkable resource for people who have never seen them before. So I'm, I'm privileged to be part of a group of people, one of a group of people who tries to take care of these art forms and bring them into the future with a renewed energy.